overall, you know, uh, things which we have done in the past also. Okay. And sure. add, you know, something uh, more on it. So I was just having a look at if we have missed out something. Okay. So I was seeing that there is um, unspecified behavior for the languages. So I think uh, that is what we, uh, is one of the topic I should spend some time. Okay. okay. So that you learn about writing some portable code. So I was just seeing that as a, a missed out thing. For us, uh, most of the stuff which we spoke is almost done here. Yes. Yeah. So particularly, yeah, on this. I'm just seeing. So, you know, I think like most of the things which we have covered here, Mm -hmm. um, bit fields, packed, unpacked, must be. So this part I think is left over, you know. Okay. So I wanted to spend some time here. I think yesterday we tried memory crash debugging. Yes. Yes. FSM, cross tool chain. Did we discuss about the make file? I think initially we did, right? Initially we did, yes. Yes. Static library builds. Yeah, I think with LD script we have done. X. So, yeah, of target without OS and creating binary image and running standalone. Mm -hmm. So, I think we have given something on QEMU itself, which is much stronger than this, yes. and running on the architecture for ARM also, right? Yes. Yeah. So, more or less, uh, we're there. Oh. I just wanted to know how convenient now you are in, you know, just five, 10 minutes of interaction first, okay, before you get like, wanted to see, like, you know, yeah. How do we, you know, move forward? Because officially we might, you know, close the session. Yeah. True. Uh, how do you move further, like, in, in terms of being engaged in this? So, you know, like, um, so that your coding does not die or, you know, your, true. What, see, uh, because slowly yeah. it will start evading, right? I mean. Yes. I mean, as, as you mentioned uh, yeah. some time back, so it needs some practice uh, for sure. But uh, from my end, I mean, from the C, I mean, it's been it's been a while, like more than so many years, and I never, um, I mean, had a session so interactive like this. I mean, on C, uh, I, I definitely have got confidence that uh, I mean, the, on the concepts, I understood. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I think is, I mean, it's 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 a uh, it's my bad that you know I could have practiced more during this. Uh, session D during this time when I, mean, uh, I had a lot of time but um, unfortunately I, uh, I, I uh, it's my mistake I mean so I should uh, come up with something uh, that's where I need your help like uh, yeah. some, some some practical um, you know some coding yeah. experience where uh, yeah so I was just thinking you know just yeah. to be loud on just being loud on the discussion side yeah that I take out some small modules okay okay in maybe you know something new which we want to do or something uh, think okay. on some idea and give you that can you you know try that out okay yeah yeah maybe it is an existing code base also it's it's okay anyway i mean it doesn't matter yes, yes as long as you get the confidence of you know yeah uh, maneuvering the code on your own you know? exactly exactly that's what um, yeah i uh, and, you know like say if there is a build or there is a, some kind of uh, yeah. Bug which is there, and if you could, you know, try to see if you can fix that. Yeah, uh, I mean, chances of me writing a full-fledged code, uh, being hardware engineer, I don't know. I mean, I never. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. it's a remote possibility that you have to write everything from scratch anyway now, right? I yeah. think we are on the same page now. Yeah. Even though you have to write everything, is not to be written from scratch. There are a lot of things already done, right? Yeah. I mean, so just develop on that. But yeah, editing has to be done by you. That is for sure. Yes. And uh, yeah, also, I mean, going forward, I mean, uh, I would definitely need your help, like to define what, what, what is the next best course for me? Yeah. No, I was also thinking, you know, like, because yeah. see, I was just trying to see, see, this is the experience for me as well. See, I worked on various different softwares and hardware pieces. Okay. Okay. And what I see is that software is so dominant. Yeah. Despite, you know, the hardware you know, is getting very powerful. Mm -hmm. 
it is you know demanding more and more you know uh, software intelligence on the hardware right because now hardware comes with more power and more resources totally right? agree 100% yes yes and you take any field you know i mean it is really one of the backbones so software is like everywhere whether it is entertainment or something yes and yeah on those lines if you look at you know the software side this application software versus the system software Mm-hmm. Uh, earlier we had this category you know like i am a system software guy and i only work on os or i am a driver guy that who only works on a device driver okay, okay. Uh, and and i am an i am on a bootloader guy and i am only going to work on bootloader but the trends in the past is like you know people needs multi talented uh, skills or multi skills you know single skill is no more uh, right a requirement anymore in the organizations yeah, yeah. and i see this is uh, further increasing so you know we all also want if the hardware engineers can also understand the software part and mm-hmm. if they can write some code or edit some code or mm-hmm. manage the code on their own rather than you know having another set of team for them you know mm-hmm. it's like you know uh, still we are searching for that one guy which can make the uh, yeah <laughs> or take the you know ownership in the entire project and then the rest all could be a bill of material or something if this there is fine it's not there also it's fine you know yes yes yeah i did some research on all this and you know like if you look at applications also designed right now mm-hmm. a trend from uh, leaving some of the very critical uh, i mean uh, um, mm-hmm. spaces like aerospace or defense or weapon system or certain mm-hmm. medical you know devices mm-hmm. or automotive even not automotive i would say just medical okay most of them are shifting from a proprietary software to an open source software yes okay yes. this is a very important feeling you know i i was just trying to do a research on uh, mm-hmm. uh, some 3 years back versus the 6 years back of research so yeah. this is a trend like you know the android is a trend linux is the trend Yes. Yeah, and and if you compare this with VX Web or QNX, they are in trend. They are legacy proprietary real-time OSs. Exactly. Yes. They are cost-centric boxes, mm-hmm. and you know you you need to keep paying for the licenses lifetime. Yeah. yeah. So you know the industry is shifting. Yeah. typically in the consumer market the network infrastructure market and this if you see linux and android mm-hmm. is the one of the most dominant uh, you know uh, portfolio yes and being a hardware engineer i think the earliest or the nearest thing which you could think of is uh, or android to you in the current context not that we cannot learn vx works okay? okay but the demand for using a vx is yes, low sir. linux is low yeah is very very less you see no all the stbs earlier we had some proprietary operating system isn't it exactly yes right now i mean it's all going where i'm all the linuxes you know earlier even i remember we had some boxes like you know nds you must be aware right nds yeah, i know yes yes yeah nds balakrishna was there one of my friend they all used to build on mips boxes mips okay so mips 32 mips 62 mm-hmm. and entire european market on their set of boxes yeah. and then they all had Mont, you know monta vista linux mbl mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. running on them an rt linux and today though they have gone for you know the next generation of uh, the box which anyway was purchased by cisco and they killed it almost right they killed it yeah they want to put their ip inside so true i mean that's where the motorola also um, uh, like lost uh, yeah motorola they were very badly hit. towards open source i mean they always wanted to keep it for themselves and so you know that metro code warrior and all those things that's yeah. why it was spoiled yeah 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 you, you rightly put it i mean it's, it's the era of open source now i mean yeah so i think you know i'm thinking you know for people like uh, you guys or us you know who are very experienced on the hardware side yeah having the the open source knowledge will always you know give us more opportunity and option both has to be addressed 
Yes. You know, so tomorrow if we have uh, some projects running around uh, some, you know, uh, Android and Linux, you would see that that's happening everywhere. Yeah. So whether it's an entertainment system or a network infrastructure system or whether it is a router or infrastructure building or IPBS systems, I mean, uh, you cannot omit out these uh, you know, boxes. So I think that could be a good career uh, yeah. shift. I would not say shift, but maybe an add-on to you because... No, actually, I'm also looking at a shift because, I mean... <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, this I wanted to know from you, how yeah. you... Our feeling and you know yeah. yeah I mean I as much as I would like to be in hardware side I mean it's mm -hmm. drinking the, the yeah, I know so I should get prepared <laughs> yeah yeah it's important yeah we, we we also get a pulse right at some point of time you will realize that this is the this is the yeah. this is the best possible you know uh, you know, opportunities we had in the past and now things have really shifted and uh, time for me as well, right? And yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think you know, in the whole, all lines, if we consider having a very strong knowledge of uh, hardware, mm -hmm. having in one open source mm -hmm. like Linux definitely makes sense for you. Mm -hmm. That that is, I would definitely say. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. And um, I mean, uh, when, uh, like Linux and Android. I mean, that should be the way to go. Okay. Okay. Uh, my idea is like you know, it's yeah. easier. You know, even as a software engineer or as a system engineer, mm -hmm. people can easily consider you. They say, hey, I know the hardware and I am also competent on Linux or Android, you know? Yeah. So it, it is a very attractive portfolio. Okay. I mean, Android... Uh, commodity, uh, I mean, it is a big company. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, I mean, Android, uh, when you say Android, I mean, so you would recommend going on a system, system, system side? side? System side. Oh, okay. Uh, see, the, 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 you know, if you look at an Android, then mm -hmm. uh, Android has two layers on top of Linux. So it's like, uh, you can think of a Google is the distributor for a Linux. Yeah, okay. okay. So Google provides a mobility-based operating system. And it's just like Microsoft here, you know? Yeah. My operating system, any hardware, I don't care. Okay. Okay. So Android, as long as, see, the intent of Google was very clear that iOS is gaining popularity and it is dominating, it's proprietary. Okay. How do I attract the people? So I will make the source open source. So choose Linux kernel, build a stack on top of that by removing the licensing mechanism by rewriting the entire library on their own and build the Android file system on top. So it becomes an operating system distribution. And he started attracting all the OEM and hardware vendors saying that, you know, please use this software mm -hmm. and ensure that, you know, there is a CTS compliance. So if you use an Android, what is the primary requirement that all the Google's app must be available yeah. as a part of the distribution. Okay. Otherwise I will not give you a certification to run yeah. your Android boxes. So whether you run a set of boxes on Android mm -hmm. or whether you run a entertainment system, or on a television on that, or a smart TV, I don't care. Yeah. You okay. must show me a Gmail there, you must show me a YouTube there, you must show me all those apps through which my primary reach is that yeah. Google's application should be there everywhere mm -hmm. so that the advertisement can reach to the people. Yes, yeah. And I keep making money. True. So desktop is nearly, you know, one by 10 of the manufacturing of the mobile. And yeah. That's so is the reach, and 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 that's the requirement. And you can see, you know, in last ten years, Android since two thousand six, yeah. if we compare, right, from Cupcake, one point five, one point six, and then Eclairs, and then uh, Fryo, and Gingerbread, and Honeycomb, and KitKat, and today, uh, Oreo, and you know, it, it keeps coming, you know, yeah, again and again. Everywhere, no? Yeah. So, yeah. what they have done, they have made two layers. One, the kernel layer, which keeps upgrading all the while. And then on top, their own, you know, NDK, what they call it as, which is a native development kit. Okay. And then they have something which is called as an SDK, which is a software development kit. Yeah. So idea is very simple for them that all the applications which are going to run, you know, the APK files, which we use on top, mm -hmm. it's a package, it's a zip file, which you want. You can, you know, rename the APK as a zip file and unzip. Okay. There's a lot of resource files over there. 
Yes. Yes. And and that is written in a Java native environment. Okay. So their idea was to write applications which can be you know very popularly you know uh, accessed by the internet application developers. Okay. okay. So C C plus plus can take a lot of time in developing internet applications. Yes. So how we can attract the Java developers on Android mobility? This was the move. Why you know their applications on the top always runs on Java, and what okay. they do is they provide you this uh, two layers. Either you can use the older Dalvik. Which is a virtual machine under which you run, mm -hmm. or now they have added something like an ART, which we they call it as Android Runtime. You know, yeah. So you run on that. Now the problem with Java and the JVM and Android Runtime is that they do not interact directly with the hardware. You know, right. Yeah. So what they are doing is they are adding something like a native development kit. Okay. A native development kit is built completely on C plus plus. Not even on C. It's on purely on C plus plus. Okay. So there, what you can do, you can write your media player, or you can write your accelerator. You can use cache line policy. You can use yeah. You know, so all the GPU programming. So all the media programming, writing codec, frame buffer. You know. So you can create environment via which you can interact with the hardware directly by this native development kit, which they call it as what NDK. And 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 then you you know you interact with the Linux kernel internal like you know writing some drivers on top. So application on Java interacts with C plus uh, plus SO files. You know the shared object file which we created, right? Yeah, yeah. The SO files we created. Java, JNI they call it Java native. Interface. Uh -huh. So JNI what it does, yeah. JNI allows you you know native interfaces to interact with these SO files. So dot so files are written in uh, C and C plus plus, okay. And and then it interacts with the Linux kernel hardware. Okay. Okay. So you know if we have to target the uh, as a hardware developer directly the Java programming, I think it is a little. I mean, see, nothing is impossible to read if we no, have. Yeah, answer. it's little <laughs> out of uh, you know kind of. Uh, right now, I'm feeling the same thing. I mean, so yeah. I'm working on that. Develop uh, this app development. Um, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would I, I would say the same thing because we also had some kind of an oath earlier uh -huh. that you know either I will remain technical or learn Java. <laughs> yeah. We had that kind of a feeling earlier <laughs> uh, that uh, hey. David, if you want me to be technical, I can stay technical. Or you tell me, I can start learning Java from tomorrow. Yeah. And then he stares at me and says, hey, "Well, then you continue being technical. <laughs> <laughs> Don't learn Java." <laughs> I escaped myself from Java. Yeah. But it is not uh, yeah. something which directly will connect. You understand? No. See, yeah, I understand. From yeah. hardware, then we come to C. Yeah. The next step should be your C plus plus. On the language side, so that you know we can reach to the state of object and application also. Okay, okay. the framework, the UI. So yeah. you can always touch them. Okay. The second yeah. thing is looking at the Linux and Android side. You know, okay. so even on Android, it should be Android internals, which should be much beneficial for you. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, I mean, so on the system side, I mean. Yeah, of course, system side. Yeah, like you know, building the Android and making this, bringing the board up and all. I think that's what they will expect from you also, because, you know, yeah. you come from such a strong hardware background. Yeah, uh, they will feel like, hey, these guys can diagnose most of the thing which will go wrong in there, right? So I mean, I was kind of uh, worked on with this bringing up some reference boards using Android, but that's more like I mean, you get the the, the source code from the vendor, <laughs> just build it, and so I. <laughs> I'm not. I, I mean, I thought I should go deeper. I mean, that's that anybody. Yeah, can. you feel like there are so many things which is already ready-made. Like you know, just have a bit bake, run lunch, and go. Home. Yeah, just lunch and yeah, just. Yeah, yeah, most of the time you are lunching. Yeah, I I know that. <laughs> a little more deep will help you. I mean, yeah. you know, we should go in terms of like adding a new, you know, uh, uh, hardware support on an Android itself can be a good project for you. Yeah, that could be. Yeah, that's a real thing. I mean. Yeah. But you know, I don't know if you will get those opportunity very you know often here. I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, it's not like it is not there, but 
very few when you know how india works right i mean i know i know yeah all the hardwares will be designed and developed by the american people yeah yeah and they will throw the box and they will say hey, there are some issues can you fix it we are working on another box true yeah that's what happens yeah 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 mm-hmm. so i think on still on those things even to diagnose that those kind of you know challenges yeah a system level knowledge is always advantageous true. i mean the the reason is i mean i i might i don't know what's going to happen in future but i I'm, i'm definitely going to try uh, get back to us and uh, you know, be like try to find some jobs and so i thought this information this this uh, knowledge will definitely help at that time uh, yeah. that's kind of uh, and, and yeah you should harvest yourself in in right now in terms of you know gaining as much as information we can yeah yeah uh, Yeah. i think you know this is stack you should try it out my my choice will be something like this that now you have c you should really get very strong in linux first yes yeah I, and then okay. when you are very strong on linux it doesn't matter android or something else tomorrow mm-hmm. comes how does it matter to me yeah i agree i mean uh, so you should be very robust in uh, linux number one and that is on both the side you know app and embedded application side both because in linux advantage is you directly can write applications in c c++ number one mm-hmm. linux itself is on c and you will have the uh, always a hardware control with you you know yes yeah yeah and you should not think that everywhere you know you will have an android requirement mm-hmm. android is a good box for head based solutions headless it doesn't work yeah yeah so having linux it will give you more system command is what i think yeah i think uh, that that yeah. really makes sense uh, yeah. i'll i'll talk to um, i mean we can work on this i mean you know oh, I, we, yeah. we can always we can always take some break let's let's take some break and then you know like yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, would, i would definitely work on this like you know first spend some time on this and yeah. some consuming time break you can take sure yeah and yes. you can evaluate yourself it will be nice is what i mean. yes yes okay. thank you mm-hmm. yeah. uh so so my recommendation just to summarize go something like this that uh, master linux first yes then get into c++ yeah that to modern c++ okay 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 or another track could be a python you know either of these two yeah the python i mean you have some i mean i have i have worked on some projects uh, in python i mean at the very basic level where huh. we had some wifi uh, like equipments so i was kind of using python using their apis just uh, automating it so that it prints all the uh, out i mean like uh, uh, logs and all j- just save it to excel such kind of simple thing i have done with python mm, mm, mm. so i i'm not sure i mean will that help uh, like if i uh, mean progress uh, work on python i mean i i don't know where where does it that fit you know. i can give you a very good example where hardwares are using python you know these micron companies and others in singapore which i know even uh, intel and ti other broadcoms and all uh-huh. they are heavily using python for performing asic test and verification oh okay so they have their robot framework which is a test framework so all the validation and verification of the hardwares you know is done using that framework diagnostic and all that is completely built on python also nowadays okay so that is like an alternate to c++ you uh, it's an alternate uh, scenario to c++ oh okay so and there are some hardwares where c++ is heavily being you know so if you see the network infrastructures and all mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are moving it to you know c++ okay okay again you know yeah it, it's a tough call for all of us you know <laughs> yeah that's where i need your help because we start feeling greedy that hey it's good that if i know python also and <laughs> see yeah. <laughs> yeah so but it can be staged out i mean but you know why c++ i said you because a lot of hardware are, you know uh, implementations also is happening in c++ okay like i can give you a case of juniper which we are working very close with okay mm-hmm. so they have their sunnyvale team okay okay in the us their office is there and you must be knowing uh, ruckus wireless also oh yeah yeah our our company now ah so now uh, yeah as a part of the team so even ruckus wireless has their office in sunnyvale oh okay mm-hmm. and uh, you know 
I was seeing their product portfolio, which they are building it for like cell site and all those, no? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They all were built earlier on a single, you know, user kind of, uh, means uh, executable kind of thing, monolithic kind of stuff. Okay. Now, all these architectures has been rewritten in C++. Oh. So Juniper's next boxes, which you will be seeing, right? Which mm -hmm. is coming out right now. Mm -hmm. They all are based on a unique thing called as Evo, EVO. Evo, okay. uh, Evo, Evo platform they call it, mm -hmm. and that's purely rewritten and designed in C++. Mm -hmm. So I mean, all the infrastructure. So it's roughly like a billion-dollar product. Oh, okay. Already, so yeah. this this could be a track. Why I said C++ because if you have C++ background, mm -hmm. the Android internal and the native development kit for writing drivers and you know writing some framework codes oh okay, okay. could also be targeted to yeah that, that that definitely makes sense okay. and second what advantage you have is tomorrow if you have some hardware requirement where c++ code base is needed you are ready for it yeah yeah and the third thing is c++ independently also as a binary program you know just like c mm -hmm. can give you that object orientation robust software design writing technique so imagine if you get into some kind of C++ project for data analytics for a particular hardware, you know, like for say some kind of gaming is going on or, you know, you have to write some GPU programming or something, you know, okay. your graphical process unit programming and all. Yeah. They will be used on C++ and some of them in Python, you know. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Like NVIDIA, you know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. NVIDIA actually tried CUDA with JavaScript and they couldn't be very successful. Okay. So finally, they came back to C++ C++ now. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, these are some outlooks which I am researching and I'm finding this is how things are moving. Okay. okay. And, you know, system side guys are definitely sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, so, I think yeah, that's the thing. first and then... C++, yeah. yeah, you should spend some good amount of time in Linux for sure. Yeah, it should be like very free flowing, very lucid for you. Linux should be very lucid for you. Yeah, and then you can build anything on top. Is what my thought is. Yeah. Yes. I think that yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. All right. So I just wanted to explain you a little bit uh, more on one of the area, which is the unspecified behavior of the languages. Okay. Uh, one of the part that is yeah. when you you know run any codes like it's too big to even think of it. How about hello? One of the thing comes to that you know if you have a you know a static variable. Okay. Uh, okay. Instead of starting a big, I will give you definitions here. So you know uh, terms like undefined behavior. What does it mean? Is Versus unspecified. So, you know, if you undefined behavior in the sense, the way program will behave if you have an errorness construct and the errorness data in your source code. And for which compiler does not impose any warning or implementation requirement. And so does the standards. It means there are more than one way via which it could be handled. Okay. okay. So I'm writing undefined means what? I'm writing an errorness construct and errorness data. 
this i have mentioned in i should yeah. it's all about you know the how the manner in which you you know realize open the code write the code extend the code and so and so on. okay So I don't know if you had a chance to go through this NC PDF, which I had shared with you. Just trying to you know, show you the standard present here. Terms and symbols. Yep. Okay. Your voice is breaking again. Yeah. This one. I hope you can see the screen now. I can see, yes. Yeah. So it says that, you know, upon a non portable or RNS program construct or RNS data for which international standards imposes no requirements. And possible undefined behavior ranges from ignoring situations completely with unpredictable results. Like an integer overflow is a very simple example of undefined behavior. So the, in the manner which compiler is going to handle can be more than one. And hence it is non-portable. And there must be a way to figure how this is non-portable. The second one is unspecified behavior. When it talks about, you have, write, you have written a program, okay? But it's correct. It doesn't have any error. But the way it will be evaluated is completely depending on the compiler. So I cannot put a standard over it. Now, just to tell you another example, say if I have a mean which returns me instead of integer a double, who stops me for doing this? No one. Because the function will return you see, and as you can see, the program is already compiled. Okay. There's no side, you know. Now you imagine if I have a structure. Which has And tomorrow you think that I am actually returning X. And here I'll create an X of O, which can be initialized to the value, say, 0 cross FF. And status will be, say, some 0 cross F, something like that. Okay. 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 Wait one second. Sure. Third. Adi Ali no lo. Second try to third. Sorry, Vinu, I had my son. Oh, no problem. Yeah. So. Sikta. First row, second row, third row, fourth row, all the four, examine and take it and go. Sorry, no? don't trouble me. Sita? Hi. So which grade your son? Uh, uh, sorry, he is in fifth grade. Oh, fifth. Oh, he's yeah. going to sixth. Uh, so it's like, you know, he's into ICSE. Oh, okay. So he'll be getting into sixth now. Yeah. Which, which school he goes to? He goes to this New Horizon Public School, NHPS. Uh, New Horizon, okay. My my elder son also going to sixth grade. 
Oh, Hazel Six. Oh, okay. Yeah, Hazel. Oh. Web guy. Web G. Ah, Web G. I know. Yeah. That's in yeah, Marthali, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. For us, New Horizon is in Hundred Feet Road, Indra Nagar. It's closer, right? Uh, it's I heard it's a. It's the good. It's the good. Space. Yeah, I mean, at least ICSC, you know, right? It's little. Yeah. 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 And they start a little slower, like. In CBSC, Muru Varu Varsha Oh, okay, okay. Uh, like, the, you can start the school from three and a half. So if somebody is on a CBSE, sixth class, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, ICSC will be fifth class. Oh, one Varsha? Uh, uh, one Varsha, you know, late again, entry the goal. So, if you have to get into it, four and a half years to start. Oh, okay. Air Varsha, standard one layer, the minimum okay. requirement. Okay. Yeah. So let's catch up. No, I think what are you doing these weekends? How are you placed? Are you placed over here? Yeah, actually, uh, on the um, family and um, relatives, mother over there. Oh, okay. Uh, in my, um, cousin. So try to free self. No? Sometimes I was thinking to catch up with you. Yeah, we will definitely meet sometime. You free the guy. Sir, well, being you next week, let's see, you know, if maybe ah, even no, 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 over time, if you're free sometime. Sure, sure, sure. You can drop sure. in and you know, you yeah. go for some coffee or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, this is another example. Now you can see here, the main is always supposed to return an integer, right? Yes. Now yes. here, this is an example where we do not return, you know, I mean, anything here. And expectations are that if main returns, there will be an integer value all the way. So okay. what is the purpose of returning from a function is to know whether function returned properly or not. That's the whole idea. But we are breaking that rule about the value. Rather, we are returning a structure which doesn't have any meaning. You know. But still, compiler can not control it. But can you see the side effect of this? Yeah, I mean, it so, works, but it also it throws works, them. but there is no rule as such, yeah, to handle it. So it's very undefined. So, you know, writing something which is not portable like this, maybe in some compiler, no, it doesn't give even segmentation fault and runs, you know. Okay. It can be utterly, you know, uh, challenging for the See, when you run a program on a shell, no, you can always use this question mark, dollar and question mark. Mm -hmm. And that gives you some number return, which says that whether it is zero or non-zero. So if it is, the value is zero means it mm -hmm. is successfully executed. Okay. Or it returns a unique value, which you know. For example, if I say here, And here, if I say, then you will notice that from architecture, you can verify what was returned. You know? Okay. So, a dot out echo. You can see that? Hmm. So, whenever you run a program, right, the exit value from main comes back to you. Oh, okay. Okay. And to control this, you know, if we want to, usually the idea is what? To have the error control mechanism. You must have used error controls. Okay. If not, I will just introduce you system-wide errors. The one is ERR, NO.H. So here, all the standard errors which you think will be declared here. And they will be given some kind of, you know, defined numbers as well. Mm -hmm. So you know, that. I mean, here, bits error number dot h. So I can you know, locate this and show you this. So, lot of mania but yeah so 
we'll talk vim x it says want to use in general yeah. so can you see these yes yeah so all the standard errors they have actually given the numbers like this mm -hmm. and so if i say echo dollar question mark and if these numbers come okay then it refers to you know like maybe some protocol is not available or too many data types the network is down atrella borkonde dikite Okay. Is a part of some standard, you know, error, you know, definition. Mm -hmm. So either programmatically also we can have an error number. Global variable is there. Okay. okay. As you can see, it can have the number of the master. So it's a global variable which is exported. So directly, if you say if you're writing some if else condition or while condition anywhere, so. if the condition is false you can always say error number has can to be returned the error number so you know it will always be having some non zero value for it successful so okay. it will never be set to zero by any system called a library mm -hmm. all has to be non zero if it crashes or null like say minus 1 so most of the time if system call is failed it will always return minus 1 in your program No. again the same thing those different standard you know mm -hmm. uh, errors are listed over here. okay you know you will get this value and you have to go and search the exact number so echo so it is a very easy uh, uh, has its own meaning i mean yeah exactly okay yeah it means in linux these are some very standard things say for example e access means permission denied it means there is a process okay which is trying to access a file for which he has does, doesn't have a permission mm -hmm. so we to debug the application now go and ask the people the saying hey this doesn't have an access so is it that we are not supposed to access this file or is, is there any other way by which i can access the file okay it's like you know sometimes we don't want an application to interact with another directly Mm -hmm. maybe i'll give you a bus via which you have to connect or you know channel ipc kind of thing oh okay but user is trying to access directly from that you know process mm -hmm. so uh, i mean one of the example there's several other condition also where you can get permission okay so like this you know if say if you get something like you're trying to open a file which does not exist or device doesn't ex exist mm -hmm. it may also give you something like e no device or, or something you know mm -hmm. if you try to open up some so for this there is an api also so that you can get the print the error kind of thing okay man e error so system error message itself will be printed by it okay so i thought you know i can just extend because it's an example of non portable behavior at least how to track the errors no it's a pretty important condition okay okay so now you see we have this uh, error number variable list of all the errors which will be stored as a string and this error and these are some standard wrapper way by which errors can be you know controlled by us so either err api or error number if you want only the number which i just showed you right now okay or just error as well you know just error is like you know at the end of the line or count or something so okay. say if you are writing some program and if you expect that on that line there is some error then you would like to print the error message in the compilation or a build or an run application side so very basic uh, you know error reporting mechanism whenever you run it will clear your standard output or the prn or error system okay. and then print the entire message something like that yes. have you ever had a chance to work on these uh, error mechanism um, not no. not really okay. so this is this is something which uh, you know you can you know, think of say try to open i'll show you one yeah mm -hmm. so 
open. My video. Okay, let FDB open. I'm just trying to open a file in low level API in okay. Linux. We just do it by using this. So just say FD. FD is a file descriptor. File descriptor? Yeah. So, you know, whenever a file is opened, some number related to a file will be shown to you. Yeah. And then we can say if FD is less than zero. Okay, it means there is some negative value. It means system call failed for some ze some reason. Okay, then I can say P error. I'll try to run this program. Okay. They need the error declaration. Uni stood. We're using system called wrappers. Okay. We compile this. Sys types and uh, sys type. Okay. So it needs status stack. And I think even FC and tier. File control is what it means to. Okay. Yes, in order to run the open API, all these three. Mm -hmm. You can see here. Yeah. This is my message. But there is a system related message also. No such file. Yeah. True. Now what we do is I'll copy this and I'll go to that either I can open the error header file or I can just say man error. There will be exact such message called as no such file directory. Such modern entry. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Got it? Yes. So E no entry. That's the macro that they have defined. Okay. So now I can go to, you know, the program and check. Or it's more easier and cheaper for you, right? You could directly have said it. When you run this, echo dollar. Question. Some value has written because we have written 200. So error number has been overwritten and written is being always 200. Okay. Which is not correct. Yeah. yeah. So through this message, I will go and find the define. I'll open the error dot hash and find the actual number. Okay. Right. Because program crashed there, but return from after that, if it's after if you are not coming out of the program, you understand? Yeah. Yeah. So, 
It's a very you know, interesting way of uh, you uh, knowing about the undefined behavior. So I just wanted to give you an example where we uh, generate a, you know, undefined behavior. Okay. Then create some scenarios for which legally we get some errors and we how do we debug? So whole idea was what? That mean was supposed to return some integer which represents some certain condition for failure. Mm -hmm. And if something undefined happens, either you know it will be taken care by the system or it will crash. For example, you saw the segmentation fault. There is no legal way of handling it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now similarly, there is one more confusing stuff which is unspecified behavior. Now, you know, if I ask you a question, if static variable, okay, yeah. is not initialized by me, then what is the default value of it? As a, uh, zero. Remember, if I have a static in a data, so if I use this mm -hmm. and I straight away print, what is the values because I initialized it, correct? Yes. Now my question is, I don't initialize it. Then what should be the expected value? You know, in ANSI compiler, we clear the BSS. Now, you know, uninitialized data go and store in the BSS segment. Do you recall? Yeah. 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 And BSS gets cleared in ANSI. Cleared means it zeroes it mm -hmm. manually. If I compile this code, say GCC, uh, so it's still hello.c. Oh, no, I'm going to complete different trick here. Okay. Hello. Hello. GCC. You can see by default the data has been initialized to zero. zero. This compiler is perfectly fine, but not the same with other compilers. Okay. So the technical answer is that if static variable is not initialized, it is left unspecified behavior. Okay. It means some compilers like NC zeros it. And some compiler just leaves it uninitialized. That is why we all teach everyone that, see, if you're using a static variable, mm -hmm. please equal it to zero. Oh, okay. So that in every compiler, it doesn't matter whether you're NC or non-NC, I don't care. Yeah. You will be portable and predictable. Okay. Getting it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Because that's the first thing which we teach for all the coders that, hey, if you're using it, just initialize it to zero. Why do we teach that? Because we know that there are some compilers which may leave the initialization aspects. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, I want to give you some old compilers examples, you know, where we used to have trouble. The idea is, you know, initializing also sometimes can be backfiring us. You know, let, let's take an example that we have a controller, okay, yeah. uh, which is supposed to have some temperature sensors verification. Okay. So every time, you know, we want to keep account for fluctuation in the temperature. People comes in a room, temperature increases, goes out. Mm -hmm. Light intensity, intensity is very high, the temperature yeah. goes up, yeah. and so on and so on. Yeah. So as you mean a controller, you know, I write a very simple code of a function, like static variable, and keep incrementing it. Okay. Now based on NC, mm -hmm. you know, you know, it is zero and it starts from zero to say 500. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in a day, we have a fluctuation rate for 500 times fluctuation was encountered, say. Yeah. Counter has reached that and it has logged it. Now for some reason, assume that the controller got reset. Okay. What will happen when the system will boot from flash once again? According to the NC requirement, it will clear the BSS. What will be the current count? Back to? Zero. 
zero. Yeah, you know, true. sometimes what happens is uh, we cannot be very stringent in the language rules also. Okay. Being very stringent in language rules will leave us, you know, unsolved problems. Okay. So I cannot always rely on, you know, following a fixed standard compiler rule itself for solving my problem. Yeah. So what language does or standard uh, international standards? They keep this open for compilers to implement in their own way. Okay. So that wherever there is a need of such scenario, it can be solved via these kind of you know compilers. Okay. Okay. Or vice versa. Yeah. I hope you got that, right? Yes. Yeah, that is, yes. Yeah. Another very tricky thing is the way a function designator gets evaluated in the program. Now, this I should give you an example. This example I think you already are aware about. I will only give you and you will realize this. I think you know what, uh, yes. yeah. this is a very popular interview question since last 25 years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you explained this. Um, you much. remember, right? Yes, yes. So the whole idea here is what? It is an unspecified behavior language. Yeah. The manner in which the function designated, these are called as what? Function designated arguments are evaluated. It's completely up to the compilers because if you're evaluating from right to left or left to right, yeah. uh, compiler is in a free will to decide the values, you know? Yes. So there may be many. So, 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 you know, we should be, you know, absolutely be clear about this. I think these are the two things which uh, definitely I wanted to to you know cover up and we should learn that how do we you know write these you know portable codes by ensuring uh, the code practice there is no nothing else which we can do beyond this okay it's more of a code practice which we should okay. be doing yeah yeah uh, more or less you know for today as i said there is not much content to cover okay i will open up some faqs for you okay. like data structures have you tried in the past a little? Uh, like construction of the data, uh, data structures like link list, binary trees, have you heard of them, right? Yeah, I heard about it. Um, yeah. So yeah. would you like to see how would we construct those? Yeah, that will be helpful. Okay. So let's take uh, maybe a couple of minutes break. Okay. Yeah, sure. Then we'll get started with link list. Okay. Sure. Let us take care. You're okay, right? You have the time, no? Sure, yeah. Thank you. Yeah.
So Vinu, I am back. Are you there? Hi, Nimesh. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, let's give you a small, quick overview of the data structures. Now, see, data structure is uh, agnostic to to languages, actually. Mm -hmm. And as the name suggests, uh, it's the structure for a data representation. It's like, you know, how do you represent the data by using a structure? So structure talks about structural data. I mean, a way which is a finite way of representing a data. Okay. And hence, there is some techniques for performing the algorithm on this data. So, you know, you you first and foremost think of a style of storing a data. Array. So it's about the space, string logic. Yes. And then you think about how do you retrieve or travel the data. So search, sort, basic algorithms. Yeah. And then, you know, it becomes suddenly very complex because uh, as and when the data starts growing, mm -hmm. the decision making for selecting what data and all uh, also becomes uh, daunting, right? Yeah. So yeah. Some very basic proven techniques are used via which you know data can be you know designed, sorted, built, and you know done in C. C does everything in manual, you know everything manual, manual in the sense right from beginning you have to write you have to write the data structure, you have to build the algorithm for it, and so and so. On. Okay. Looking at this, you will find that you know there are some other uh, languages which have learned the lesson from the past, yeah. like C plus plus or Java, or, you know, Python and Scala yeah. or Golang, what mm -hmm. these languages have done is they have actually came, come out with some kind of a library which provides all this stuff. For example, C++ is damn powerful, not because of its language features only, mm -hmm. but because it supports STL, you know, the standard template library. And that consists of a majority of the, you know, data representations. Mm -hmm. So all the algorithms which you build around, move around, are around it, okay? So if you look from a very higher perspective, mm -hmm. uh, data structure, there are two kinds of data. Uh, one, which can be stored sequentially. And the another one, which can be stored in a associative way. So there is some associativity in body. Okay. A very simple example of sequentially storing the data are like, you know, you can think of an array linked list. Okay. This is a very good example of storing the data in terms of some more examples around it, below, you know. So different kinds of uh, linked lists, like you know, singly linked list, or doubly linked list, or a you know circular linked list, or a doubly circular linked list. Or so. so these are some categories of different kinds of linked list. They store the data in in sequentially. May not be always continuous. So you cannot guarantee that one node is after another, but it will have sequential storage only. Okay. So there's no specific rule under which data gets stored. Okay. But the moment you say something like associative, then usually the data has some kind of a key involved with it or some kind of a sorting techniques in storing the data. So sorted or key based storage. Okay. So, you know, trees are a very good example of this. Usually we call it as a binary tree. Okay. And a lot of implementation of binary trees can be seen, you know, height balance, red node, you know, I mean, keeps evolving, you know. Some of the good implementations are like, you know, a set data structure or a map data structure or a multi-set data structure, or a multi-map data structures. 
So there's some very you know practical examples, you know, or hash map. Okay. And something. Like this. So these kind of different you know uh, examples, which is already out there, and you know, it does. Okay. If you take a example of a you know linked list and a binary tree they are the foundation for building all these you know examples which i'm trying to produce okay. okay so you know let's think that if i were to you know design the you know linked list so in c naturally you know you need a structure to represent any data number so it is all about the idea that, okay, how do you want to create a list? What does this list store? And what kind of operations would we be doing on this particular list store? Right? So assume that we want to create a linked list where we store all the integer data in the linked list. And it will be having no limit of start and end. You know, So there will not be any contagious memory which will be... Uh, aligned with it. Unlike in array, what happens is you prefix the size of the list, right? Yes. So it is contagious and the access is faster, but it doesn't have an ability to expand or shrink whenever we need, correct? Yes. Yeah. So linked list offers that by using the APIs of heap management, it actually tries to achieve this. So how do you declare a typical structure is by using a struct, give any name of your list. So maybe we can think of, you know, a list name, say a list. So I can say, you want to have a device list. And we can think of uh, what things device can have, maybe a device ID to be an int. And we can think of, uh, Say okay, device name. Okay, say something. And now, along with this, we also will have an struct device list star a pointer which will be holding an address of the next node. So, usually, the idea is if I am building now, let's take an example, you want to build a singly linked list. Okay. So singly linked list is like the nodes. Just give an example of first, second nodes like this. It has a, each of them have three elements. Okay. So this is a next pointer. We can think of So, you know, we'll be constructing something like this. Okay. Um. Until it reaches to the end, which is, you know, user here. 
how do you indicate null is up to you? Some signature. Usually we prefer saying null. Okay. So first and foremost, there is no element in the memory right now. Yes. Correct? Yes. The idea is we will create the first element, which is this first node. We, we usually call it as a first node. Mm -hmm. So we'll create this first node. After this, we create the second node. So while we are creating the first node, the next will be pointing it to null. Mm -hmm. If there is no nodes further to be created. So it's like, you know, after this, if there is nothing, it's only one node in the system. Suppose you want to add some more data element, mm -hmm. you can have one more next. Now that can also point to null. Or finally, it can again point to null. So till you want, you can keep requesting the memory from the system and you can keep allocating the memory in a linear direction. The single linked list, as the name suggests, it is only in a single direction it will flow. So one pointer, which will hold the address of the next node. So once you travel, you cannot go back. You have to keep traveling in that direction till you reach to the node. Okay. So if you want to come back, usually what you do, you take a temporary start pointer or some kind of a storage, which always stores the starting address of the list. Okay. And then from there, you keep moving next, 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 so that till it reaches to the null, you achieve your goal. Okay. So, you know, that's that's the style of how you design a linked list. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if it was a doubly linked list, what you could think is that it will have the node which will have two elements. Now in this case, our member is what? Device ID and device name. So if it was a doubly linked list, you can think of we will be needing four slabs. So I will just change. Okay, now we'll have four slots. We'll have Pretty interesting, you know, when these things are like, we can keep exploring lifelong. So interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So this four, um, it's... Ah, so I'm just giving an example that there will be a different data structure called as previous and next. So doubly linked list will have two pointers. What is it? W, w link. Both the address of the previous one. And then one will be having the address of the Next node. Okay. Something like that. So now the movement will be in a different direction. It means you can think one is going like this, like this. And the previous will be pointing to the previous node. And previous node. Okay. This will be pointing it to null. And this will be pointing it to null. You're getting it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So similarly, you know, uh, there's a doubly circular linked list also. Mm -hmm. So what it does, it actually has its one more, same thing, but the last one will be pointing to the address of the previous one. Okay. And here this previous one will be pointing the address of the doubly circular. From this also side, you can circle it. From that side also, you can move it. It's good for, you know, a multi-threaded application where one thread can actually go from, you know, clockwise uh, search, the another can go for another side. So idea of doubly linked list is to have a two-way, you know, communication going on. So right from back also you can come to front and from front also you can go to back. So assume that if it is a, you know, thousand element in a node, okay? okay. So if I take an example of a thousand node, what is the search in a singly linked list? Expected search. Thousand times it will take. Yeah. Worst case response can be 
a thousand multiplied by n search. In doubly linked list, it can be reduced to something like n by two, isn't it? Yes. But in that case, you have to have a technique that somebody is going from zero to somewhere mid, and someone is coming from the end to the mid, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So parallel. So you know, otherwise it will be like two n. Yes. So I always ask this question to even experienced people that you are saying that you will be using doubly linked list, but your navigation is something like first you will go from this area to this area. And then again, you come back from that area to the initial. So it is almost like double, right? Yeah, thousand. Yeah. So if you run sequentially, the point of double is not very useful. Not only that you you know occupy more space, but you end up consuming double of the time. What's the fun then, actually? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And circular linked list is something which is a modification to a single linked list. Instead of pointing it to null, what you do, you point to the start address. Okay. Okay. So these, are, uh, okay. So these are some, you know, technique, very basic techniques by which sequential uh, doubly linked lists or singly linked list all, all can be created. I mean, there are a lot of examples we can pick up from net. Mm -hmm. okay. But the design idea, I thought to you know, pass it to you. Yeah, yeah. So if I were to now create a device list, say we type depth this, just to give you a construction idea. Construct, and then I can say, depth. Uh, depth is, is my data table. So assume that I have a function which will say it's only used for creating the nodes in my example. Okay. I'll have a function which will only design and perform creating of the nodes. So what I expect is first to create dev list. And we may say something like say we have a start pointer, the head of the start point, head. And right now it is null, isn't it? Yeah. So right now this is the first element. We don't have any node. So we can say what? Start is equal to malloc of what? Size of struct, which is dev list. Correct? Yeah. So we allocate this. Of course, you can cast this as dev list pointer type because you know, malloc will actually return this okay and then what we could do is now we can assign it saying that start off so now we can also take one more pointer which is called as head and we'll say start of device ID is equal to say some device ID. One. Start of device name. And we can give some dev name. We can perform a string copy. Right. Yeah. Or it to worry assignment, string copy. And then we can say start of next is equal to null. As of now. And then head is equal to so what happened because of this can you think of what is this code doing now so 
So first and foremost, I am creating a structured memory. Yeah. Which will have right, which will allocate a memory. First, it doesn't have any nodes. So I create declared a declare variable pointer. Then for pointer, I allocated a memory by using malloc. Then all the first node now has got this memory has been created. See, yellow one. So, so what's going to be the memory? Now I am initializing device ID. So memory will be what? Four bytes for this, thirty bytes for this, bytes for this pointer. Okay. So thirty plus four, thirty-four plus four, thirty-eight. Yes. So roughly forty. If it is padding, is enabled, correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that much memory will be allocated, and now after that, I need to initialize. So I can think what will be the ID, what will be the name, which is logic. Mm -hmm. After this, this pointer is pointing nowhere right now. Who's my own next pointer, which I have kept it. Devil is next, correct? Yeah. 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 So that next will be right now pointing to null. Why? This is only the single node. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yeah. Only one particular memory has been, one is data structure memory object has been allocated. Remember dynamic memory allocation we had done for this. Yeah. Yeah. So that's been done. And then what I'm trying to say, head is another pointer, which is of same type that holds the address of what? Start. Oh. Start. So head will always hold the address of what? Start. Now imagine if there is, okay, at least one more node. required now what I can do if there is a request for if one more no is requested then what we can do is see I'm just giving you an idea mm -hmm. after this we can look at some you know so many code are there I can give you a code which you can you know run through it and see if you can you know see what the code is doing okay So now what we want to do is we want to have one more node added. Suppose some request come dynamically. Hey, please add one more node. So how do I add the next node? You know already that start of next is pointing it to what? No. None. So now what I can say start of next is equal to a malloc size of I think something like this. Getting it? Okay. And now I can say start is equal to start of next. What is this? So, start of next is pointing it to null right now, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's right now pointing to null. Yeah. So start of next. So I allocate a new memory, which is this memory. So start of next is doing what? It is allocating this. Oh, okay. Again, 40, 40. Yeah, a new memory like this. Oh, okay. But then I don't want to say start of next of device ID. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we have to keep writing this. For the third layer, we have to say start of next of next. Yeah. Then the fourth layer, I have to say start of next of next of next. So it will be too wacky. Yeah. So what we do is we say anyway, start of next is fine. After that, start itself is equal to start of next. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the address of the start is already stored in a head pointer. Yeah. yeah. So I can use the same handler. Mm -hmm. to point to the next element. Uh -huh. So from here onwards, it is as good as writing the C, these all things. Right? So now I can straight away write start of device ID, start of next, start of device name, and so on and so on. Why? Mm -hmm. Because of this line. Yeah, yeah. Getting it? Yes. Yes. If I don't use this line, what happens? 
I have to write start of next of device ID. Yeah. Yeah. Here also I have to write start of next of device name. Yeah. Start of next of next is equal to null. So this will be an endless journey now. So you can imagine if I have to write thousand list, will I be writing thousand next of next? Getting it? Yes. Yeah. So it will be very wacky. So what technique we use is reassign. It means store the starting address in some other pointer, temporary pointer like head or something. Mm -hmm. So head will always refer to the starting address. So that's never going to be lost. Yeah. And Override that start with what? Start of next. Okay. So from here onwards, it is doing the same job. Start is equal to start of null. It has reached. So if I want to now navigate, always I can start from what? Head. Head is having the start address. So head of next, second element. Okay. Head of next of next, second element, and so and so on. You know? So if I need to restrict, I mean, um... Huh. Like, like you know, we can have no, we can put a while loop yeah, and so while so on the yeah. switch okay. and choice is not equal to no, then stop creating the node and all. Okay, some kind of instead logic. of writing this linearly, what I'm trying to explain, we can put it inside a do while loop or a while loop and keep okay. looping this again and again. Okay, you can ask a user choice, okay, please insert if you want one more node, say yes, then add it, call the same function again and again, right? Okay. Yeah. But instead of generalizing, first I wanted to give you an idea that if you were to construct it for the first time, you should be able to visualize, oh, something like this is going on again and again. Yes. Yeah. Then definitely we can write these things with more formalized way tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So like from here, we can say something like while choice is equal to yes. Or is equal to one. Then you perform this job. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow we can further generalize it. You can think of int ID. Character star star name. So star name, dev name. Right? Yeah. So now what happens? ID can be assigned here as ID. Yeah. This can be assigned as what? Name. Yeah. Same thing here. You can copy the same step from here. And we can place it here. So now what's happening is we are trying to generalize this application. Yes. Of course, we'll be declaring the choice variable. So we'll default to one. And after null, we can still ask a user. Want one more node. One, yes. Then we can wait for the number. I can scan this up. Right? Yeah. 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 I'm just trying to say that this is all in our hand actually. Okay. And this is how you can build it. Tomorrow we can also generalize that, okay, a pointer will also be passed. So from main, I can say, okay, create node. And node. But first thing was to give you in the way data structures, usually we store the data, right? Yeah. Now what has happened? See, earlier there was a style of storing the data in certain structure, like, you know, we have an Excel format or we have something like a CVS format or we have a structure. So this is structure style is the same thing, right? Yeah. That first is going to be integer, second is going to be the string, fourth is going to be this. So it's always the name structures represents what? There is a fixed set of 
you know, element with their type already described. So I know that the first element is going to be this, going to be this, third is going to be this, fourth, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Just to perform. And then you can perform the search, you can perform the deletion of a node, addition of a node, delete some node from the beginning, delete some node at the end, add some new node in the beginning, add some new node in the end, add some new node in the in mid of somewhere. Okay. You know, so these are some techniques which we use it for representing the variations. Like if you want to build a queue, mm -hmm. before, first in first out or queue, Q U E U E Q you know, right? Yeah, queue. The structure. Yeah. So it says what queue means addition will always be in the back, rear. And deletion will always be in the front. For example, a very popular example we use is the ticket reservation system. Yeah, first in, first out. First in, first out. Yeah. So addition is always, the people are always getting added at the end mm -hmm. and deletion is always happening in the beginning. Yeah. So it means if you know the technique to add some element in the beginning of the node, mm -hmm. it means you know how to add that element in the start. Okay. If you start learning that how to delete the elements in the end, then it becomes what? Almost like FIFO. Yeah, yeah. Similarly, suppose if you learn to delete from the front and delete from the, and insert in the beginning only, then it will become a stack. Yes. Last in, first out. Yes, yes. So it means whichever is being, you know, inserted in that, that represents a top, mm -hmm. and that itself comes out first. Yes. It means what we are learning to, you know, insert something in the, in the front and remove that from the front as it is. Mm -hmm. Only the thing is we are saying instead of front, it is top. So the visualization in my mind is, oh, it's getting actually removed from the top. Okay. okay. The queue is front only, something like that. So yeah. add in front, remove from front is as it is a stack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, the, the variation of this, uh, you know, data structure build like this uh, becomes uh, a very common norm. Okay. Okay. So that's one. Yeah. Another style. Of, so you, you got this idea, right? Yeah, I, I got it. Yeah. Yeah. A similar style will be like, see, if you were a doubly linked list now, then you will have two pointers. Instead of one next, you'll have one more declaration called as previous. Mm -hmm. so previous will always be holding the address of what? The first node. If there is no first node, then we'll be pointing it to null. Like when we create the same node, start of next is also equal to null and start of previous is also equal to null. Yeah. Right, because it is only one node. Yeah. The moment you add the second node, start of next will be actually referring to the next node, but start of previous will be holding to the start node, which is nothing but the previous node. That's all. This is a you know programming technique, okay, mm. which is uh, used for storing sequential data structures. Okay. okay. Now the same logic can be used, but with the sorting technique kind of a thing, which is an associative data structure. And there comes the binary tree for this. So can I clear this screen? Yes. If you consider a binary tree, as the name suggests, a tree which has two different nodes connected with the root. Mm -hmm. So binary tree is like a sequence where everything starts from a root. And lot of examples which you see, like see hierarchical file system, process, hierarchy structures, mm -hmm. anything which you see on those lines or the way we store the data in terms of uh, file systems, all of them represents what? A tree structure. Like say, everything starts from a concept which is called as what? Root. Okay. So the concept is root. Root is nothing but also a node. Same thing like a linked list. Okay. 
more like a doubly linked list. Mm -hmm. And it contains two different nodes. So they say root is a parent and it has two childs on it. Mm -hmm. One is a left child and one is a right child. This is your left to child, and this is the right child. Now, how do we? So, the data will be pushed in over here. So, now let's take an example. Okay. If you have to shift the data on the left hand side, then it should be less than or equal to the root value. Okay. Re otherwise, it will be pushing on the right hand side. So let's take an example that we have some values like 12, 4, 6, 7, 8, 3, okay, 17, 5, 4. So this is 3, okay, and 1. Say, suppose this is my sequence of the data, okay, okay. And we have to construct a tree for this. So first element is what? 12. 12. So 12 is my root node. Mm -hmm. Now we have to think of the next element which has arrived. What is the value of the next node? 4. Which is 4. Now we'll compare now. It will be less compared. That the value of the 4 is less than 12 or greater than 12. Less than so less than or equal to. If it is less than or equal to, it has to be positioned on the left hand side okay. of it. So he, in this case, it will go to four over. Yes. So you can think it goes there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now, the next one is what? Six. Six. Six is again less than what? 12. Now it will go to the left. Now 6 will be compared with 4. Now 6 is what? Greater than 4 or less than 4? Greater than 4. So it will come to the right hand side of 4. Oh, okay. okay. So it will be here. Okay? Mm -hmm. And 6 goes over. So every root will have their two childs. If not, should be pointing it to null. Now let's go for 7. 7 is again less than 12. 12. So it goes to the left hand side. It is greater than 4. So it goes right hand side. It is greater than 6. So it should go what? To the right, uh, right of the 6. Right yeah. So it goes over here. And becomes 7. Let's go 7. Now we have 8. So I think it still continues in the same direction. Yeah. So here we have eight, and we keep creating this. Again, we are getting the right side of it. Now we have three. So three is less than twelve comes to left, and three is less than what? Four. So to the left. Yeah. So left of four should be where 3 should be positioned. Mm -hmm. So it comes over here. And it goes here. See, there are some nodes available here. 6, left of 6, left of 7, left of 8, mm -hmm. and right of 8 is still empty. Mm -hmm. Left of 3 is unknown. Right of 3 is still unknown. I'm talking about the possibility, you know? Right, right. Yes. So every node will be represented as what? A linked list which has left and right. Left and right. Same doubly linked list structure only. Mm -hmm. Instead of next and previous, the structure will have what? Left and right. Left and right. Only thing what we are changing is we are using association. Now we are comparing and using a technique to store this. And somebody thought it, but it was a nice way because, you know, data is stored always in a sorted order. The search actually increases by fold. It's a logarithmic search now which you'll be performing because of this. Mm -hmm. right. yes. O log n base 2, which is much, much faster in compared to a linear search, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. 
So now you see uh, you have three, but next is 17. Now 17 is higher than 12. 12. So you should come to the right hand side of 12. the 12. So there should be a right connected to this. Now we have five. Where do five get position? Uh, five is less than twelve, so four. Um, four, uh, five is uh, um, to the left of six. Perfect. To the left of six. That's the place where it should go. Set. Perfect. Good. How about? Uh, Two, two um, to the left of three. Exactly. So getting it right. Yeah. So because of this predictable way of storing the data, you know that's what they say. Sometimes storage of the data also determines the search ability. Mm -hmm. Okay. So right. Yeah. So one should be left left to the one or two only. Yeah. So we can do that. So the nodes which are which are not I mean defined ah, is empty. Ah, so these all should be pointing it toward no. null. Exactly. So here also. And you'll see that there are a lot of nulls actually coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes to avoid these many, you know, nulls, they start pointing to their parent nodes or something. So they say that they start balancing the tree. BST okay. or something. Because there are too many nulls. So instead of pointing it to null, why don't you point to the previous parent of yours? Something like that. Mm -hmm. okay. Only if you want to improvise it. Otherwise, you know, that is the end of your, you know, search tree. So beyond one, nothing is there. So we come out saying, okay, now the search failed. You are searching for a key which is not there, say for example. Mm -hmm. okay. So I think this is something, you know, which is... Uh, Almost uh, a tree. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Binary tree. So, if the same logic will be used, only the thing is here, the notes when we are constructing, you can think if you know how to write in this, it is a building block for writing all this, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Once you can write a singly linked list, you have to add the doubly linked list. The same doubly linked list has to be done what? Instead of while I am inserting, I will ensure that. The node of previous will be holding the memory which is for higher uh, value mm -hmm. or node of, uh, sorry, previous means left. And node of right will always keep the higher value from the previous node. So I have to perform this, you know, uh, repetitive search, uh, sorry, comparison before any insertion, correct? Yes, yes. So tree often is using a recursive function to perform this kind of problem. Mm -hmm. So if you look at, you know, most of the tree, it also has different ways it can perform the search, you know. Usually tree is very popular for having search techniques, which we call it as infix or we will say prefix based search. Okay. Post search. And I mean, most than fix, you can just say fix is an order, okay. so pre order, post order, and then you have an in order. So, you know, in pre order, first you travel route then left and then right. Okay. First order, first you travel left, then right, then root. Okay. And in order is first left, root, right. By doing this, you know, the balance will be, say, if I'm going for in order, it means the result will come as one, two, three, four, 
okay, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12, and 13. It will mean it will be sorted in order. Okay. 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 Which is the most popular one. So how the search will go? First, I will start from the root. Search will start from the root. So root, I'll go to left. Now, till it goes to the end of the left, I'll keep going to the left. Root of left, root of left, root of left. Correct? Yes. And then from here it is null. So I'll backtrack, print one. Then I will go right. Null, mm -hmm. backtrack. Then I'll go back mm -hmm. to the root. Two. Go backtrack, what? Right. Mm -hmm. Then go back. So right now what it is? One and two has been come. Then again go three. Backtrack, come back. Go four. Mm -hmm. Now go right. Go to the is right. what? Six. But before that, you have to go what? The moment you go root, you have to go left. So go five. Nothing is there in the null, come back, so print 5. Right, nothing is there, come back, print 5. It means you are still in 5. Go back. Now you get into 6. Now after root being printed again, what's there, the connected node? Right. Go back, 7. Left, null. Again come back. Go right, 8, available. Again, because you referred root, again you go back to the null. Come back, again come back. Now you iterate it back till you go to the 12. All the left of the 12 has been traversed. Has been traversed. Now you go to the right. So mm -hmm. overall, the order under which you will, you know, start getting the element is going to be what sorted in order. Yes. So, so that's the whole idea about you know. So start from root, but go to left and right. Okay. okay. Oh, I think I have mistaken the here in typo. That I should remove it. it should not be like this. So idea should be like this, like in order root first left root right. Of course, the search will always start from root, but will keep going to the left, 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 left. Yeah. Then come back to root, then come back to right. Then again, come back to left, root, right, like that. Mm -hmm. And that is how, you know, search will be performed. Okay. So, you know, this is the most common order of, uh, because you always want a sorted order, you know, element list. Uh, okay. for, but people also say that instead of going this, I will go ulta. So three permutations are possible. Instead of uh, visiting left, first I will visit root, print the root, and then go left and right. Mm -hmm. Then again print root, again left and right. Yeah. yeah. And another it would be that first you visit left and root and visit the root at the end, which is the, the post order. Yeah. So yeah. These are some ideas of storing data in a certain technique so that retrieval can be very fast. Okay. The, yeah. Another technique out of this is uh, uh, completely different than this is uh, a hash map. The hash map is a data structure which stores all the data in terms of uh, a, a, a hash function, you know. So I, I, I create a table or an array mm -hmm. with some height and I find in such a way that the data gets distributed with an indexing. You know? mm -hmm. so for example, you know, if I had this uh, set of data which is there on the top and it has to be stored like 12, 4, 6 and all. Okay. Usually I find a good hash map function by which all these data can be linearly distributed. So, you know, we used to always think about how to make from capital O of n factorial mm -hmm. so the goal is to be what capital o of one n factorial is the worst algorithm the implementation okay mm -hmm. to big o notation of one big o notation of one refers to what constant time algorithm okay. it means irrespective of the size of an n time consumption to search is going to be the same. Okay. So you can see, you know, our searches were like what? O of n 
or sometimes the searches can be o of 2n some searches can be o of uh, n by 2 it means half the search time mm -hmm. this were a part of the linked lists okay. the other one which you could see is that we can have o log n base 2 and then we can also have what o of 1 so you know hash map mm -hmm. or hashing is this o of 1 concept okay where we will have a tree oh, sorry i mean the list mm -hmm. which is a what we call it as buckets you know yes bucket refers to the place where you will have the data store each bucket represents a unique cell and you know it has to hold the data so and it has to pass sequential. through a function hello i mean it's sequential i mean it yeah it will be sequentially but you know the storage will be determined by the function okay so i'll have a hash function which will determine this which can be say uh n mod 10 so whatever the number is coming here say 12 12 mod 10 will be what so this is say uh, i'm just giving an example this is the zeroth index this is the one index so like this it will go for second index 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 8 nine so now what we do is we store the data 12 mod 10 is how much 2 2 So it will be stored here. Okay. Four mod ten, four. It will be stored here. Four is stored here. Again, six mod ten, six zero one two three four five six. It will be stored. Here. Seven here. Seven mod ten, seven. Yeah. Okay. Eight. of course it will be stored here on top i have not drawn the diagram yeah 3 will 0 1 2 3 it will be stored here mm -hmm. then we will have 17 17 mod 10 7 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 17 17 is also stored here. Okay. then we have 5 0 1 2 3 4 so it will be 5 here now 2 Zero, one, two, twelve, and two. Then we have one here. So this is an example of what this function has decided the way these data are going to go and sit over here. You saw that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Now the whole idea is: can we have one such hash function? A very good hash function is the one mm -hmm. which can store a unique data in a unique cell. Okay. Now because we chose this mod mod. what has happened the outcome of this is that there are some duplicate elements means more than one elements are there in one cell yes yeah so it's very simple whenever there will be 5 15 25 35 all will be actually storing in this cell itself mm -hmm. so the idea was if we can have a function where all the elements are stored in a unique cell such will be what one shot yes so it will be o of 1 but because of this bad function for some numbers like mm -hmm. mod 10 is not a good idea it is good for one ten number but multiple of 10 will start having collision here mm -hmm. so again the search from o1 it will become on suppose if it is 10 elements like this so it will take you know n of 10 to reach there isn't it yes yes yeah so that is called as collision is always one of the challenge in the hashing okay and different techniques are used we use a singly linked list again to uh, you know manage that and other things mm -hmm. but the ultimate idea is that the function is not a good hash map function because it ended up creating more and more collision see one or two collision like this is fine okay, okay. Mm -hmm. but imagine if you take a poor function and all the elements start getting queued up in one single cell itself it is nuisance right yes So this hash map is similar to what we have in like array, array, dynamic array. 
So we take two, two linked lists and we combine them. One linked list will act like a bucket which will store the data. Another link will maintain the collision. Okay. So by two, two linked list, we can maintain what? An implementation of a hash map. Okay. Okay. So one will refer a bucket. The another will refer what? A linked list which will maintain the collision. Collision. So what we need to do, we need to create the list of the numbers. We need to create the list of the hash function and okay. also the insertion. Three things okay. together. So a little complicated it means yeah. the concept of linked list combined with the array. Mm -hmm. Okay. Using this technique of algorithm can be achieved. Okay. 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 But my suggestion always is still I say the same thing for all the professionals. That if you are dealing with the data which is structured data, okay. always prefer using trees. Trees, okay. Because if you use trees, it is deterministic. Okay. okay. If you become greedy that I will create a hash map, mm -hmm. today it may work, tomorrow if you add new and new data, if data are very dynamic, see if you have a fixed amount of data, you can look for a hard-coded algorithm. Yes. Yeah. But data keeps coming with different uh, you know, styles then the same algorithm which is working together will break tomorrow. Okay. So there is no good hash function which can ever exist. Yeah. So you wanted O of 1, you will end up becoming a linked list. Like O of N. So don't do that. Rather store everything in what? Tree. A tree. Yeah. So that it's always deterministic O log N. Okay. No matter you have 1 billion data, 10 billion data. At least you are deterministic. Okay, there's a part of yeah, because of that ordering. But yeah. in hash function, what it is today, it may be O of one, you will be, you know, everybody will be clapping, giving French kiss to you. Tomorrow yeah. it changes, no? It's worst case. Yeah. So you don't want to take chance there, you know? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's a little bit about, you know, the data structure stuff. But you should remember the data structure is nowhere related to a language or something. Data okay. structures and algorithm building is completely language and architecture agnostic thing mm -hmm. and any language can implement it you can write this in c plus plus or c or java or assembly or any other language isn't it or yes. python it doesn't matter yeah the concept is completely agnostic uh, usually people you know uh, say that we are teaching c and they end up teaching all these things yeah. by consuming the majority of their you know uh, semester programs or say if i construct an uh, syllabus, maybe I could have taken 30-40% only explaining data structure itself. Okay. But, uh, I think it can be a bad design because, you know, I'm trying to give an example saying uh, data structure is a C concept. Okay. Which is not correct. Yeah, true. Yes. Right. Completely architecture agnostic. Yeah, of course, if you know this concept, how to implement in C will vary and how to implement in Java will vary. How to implement in Python will vary. Okay, but the concept will remain neutral and same, right? Yeah. So I think, you know, these were some small, uh, you know, additions which I wanted to add to you. And maybe logically we can uh, uh, call the you know, closure for the program as of now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure you must have, uh, you know, liked uh, the program. It must oh, yeah. have given you a different boost from where you were. So I think, yeah. right? Yeah. A real refresher. I mean, uh, thank you. I mean, uh, learning from an um, experienced professional like you is always. Most... Yeah. I mean, you know, you see, uh, some insights from you will also help me. Uh, uh, yeah. Because, see, you guys are not coming from, you know, uh, some ABC place where, you know, it's not an academic we are talking here, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you guys can be the real feedback to us. Sure. It's a nice learning. You know, every session is a learning for all of us. We also yeah. learn a lot yes. from you guys. Yeah. And we want to always innovate and see if there is something more we can add on. You know, there's some more way we can improvise. Because see, uh, if we want to improve, then you have to, you know, have a feedback. Sure. Today, the whole world is working on Agile. And Agile is all about getting feedbacks, right? Right. Yes. So yes. It will be really helpful to, you know, collect some more, you know, in insights from you. And if you found it interesting and if you found it, uh, you know, inspiring, then, you know, we would like to continue these kind of, you know, programs offering or yeah. 
you know, uh, you know, you can add something more duration, this, you know, some different angles which can, you know, give more help. Yeah, definitely. Okay. For me, it was really helpful. I mean, thank you. Yeah. Um, so nice, uh, Venu, it has been a nice journey. I think, uh, you know, I don't know how quickly it finished. I think it is, you know, I feel like tomorrow again, I have to log in and talk to you. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, was, it was a wonderful journey, I mean, for me. Yeah. Um, no, so I, as in here, you know, you very new concepts and, uh, uh, yeah, as I said, I mean, learning from an expert like you is always, uh, you know, in, so, so, I mean, we will definitely, you know, be in touch and I request, you know, what I do is I'll write a mail also to you. Yeah, yeah. Where I would like to, you know, extend some activity for you. So, I hope, would you be able to take it up? Sure, yeah, definitely. So I will schedule one or two more sessions, okay? Okay. Where we can try up, uh, you know, extending some small work, project work kind of. Okay. Based okay. on your availability and my availability, let's yeah. schedule next week, a couple of more sessions, one or two sessions, short sessions. Sure. Maybe sure. 45 sure. minutes or an hour of session. Yeah. yeah. Where we discuss about some, you know, uh, uh, project or some small modules implementation and see if you can take it. up. Okay. Yeah. That'll be nice. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. As I said, I um, please, uh, um, you know, for the next course of action, I would, uh, Definitely need your help to, I mean, like what we discussed, I mean. Yeah, we, surely, surely. I mean, definitely. I'm also overwhelmed by people like you. We, we also get excited more. Yeah. And we want to give the best of ourselves. Sure. So so thank keep you. Keep doing that. Yeah. And maybe, you know, uh, some references from you also will be very helpful for all yes. of us. Definitely, yes. So for sure. yeah. if you can, you know, extend some references from you to sure. some of your colleagues, not here only, but also in US side, I know that that side is where you are more strong. Yeah. So, sure. And you can see the both the world, right? I mean, exactly. Uh, the the cost of what they are offering. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and right. the content what they offer is very limited, you know. Of course, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. Uh, yeah. if these messages can be spread by people like you, it could really help the other part of the world also, right? Sure, definitely. Yeah. Yes. So, all right, then we will sign off. You take rest and let's catch up uh, for one more session where we'll extend some yeah. browsing and, you know, code uh, review kind of an ability from you. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, I give you a code snippet. You go through it and say what it is saying and doing. And then I, you know, add something yes or no and we improve that. Okay. okay. So, that will be the next. Yeah, that will be great. Thank you. Fine. Then I'll ask Mubarak to formally close this and yeah. initiate two more sessions based on your availability. Sure. Okay. Thanks, Animesh. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks, yeah. And really good night. Yeah. Nice talk.